Today we're looking at the Sony Alpha A5000 mirrorless camera. This is part of Sony's Alpha line of mirrorless cameras that crams a very large sensor into an extremely compact camera body. Before we take a closer look at the camera, I want to show you just how compact this camera is, as compared to an entry-level DSLR, in this case the Canon T5i. And as you can see, it's extremely compact. The Canon has its stock 18 to 55 mm kit lens, while while the Sony has a 16 to 50 mm kit power zoom lens. And the most impressive part about the Sony is that it has the same exact size sensor as the APS-C sensor on the Canon. The power zoom lens on the Sony has a zoom rocker button on the side with manual focus controls on the front. The lens mount is made from metal and covers the 20.1 megapixel APS-C sensor. The camera's grip isn't very deep but is pretty comfortable considering the weight and compactness of this camera. And because of its low weight, you can also shoot single-handed. The buttons on top are pretty well laid out and easy to access. There's a dedicated movie record button, a main on-off button that hinges on the shutter button, which is surrounded by the zoom toggle button. It has a pop-up flash, which can be adjusted to vary the flash bounce angle, and a pair of stereo microphones on the left and right of it. On the rear face of the camera, you have a thumb rest next to the menu button, a control dial, with with a selector button in the middle and buttons for playback and image deletion on the bottom. The 3 inch LCD screen isn't the best and is probably one of the camera's biggest drawbacks. The resolution is much lower than the screens on some of its competitors and even its newer sibling, the Alpha A5100. This makes composing images a bit more difficult. It's usable, but Sony could definitely have done a better job. The screen isn't a touchscreen and does not articulate fully. It does, however, However, flip up for selfies and for shooting videos of yourself, which is actually pretty useful. The right hand edge has a flip open door that conceals a full SD card slot, a micro HDMI port and a micro USB port, which can also be used to charge the battery. The camera does not come with a standalone charger. As for batteries, we do recommend getting an aftermarket charger to be able to pull the battery out of the camera and charge it. This lets you swap out batteries while your first battery charges. The battery life is pretty impressive, so you might not be needing all that many spares. There's also a quarter 20 female tripod mount on the bottom. The menus are all well laid out and navigation is pretty easy, even without a touchscreen. The buttons all have a good amount of tactile feel to them and the camera is very easy to operate overall. The camera can take up to 20 megapixel stills in the JPEG format and can also store both the JPEG and RAW image simultaneously. And for folks looking to use still images, directly in videos, the camera also has the ability to shoot stills in the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. The large sensor size produces some extremely impressive images. The color reproduction is very accurate, pictures are correctly exposed, and the kit lens is surprisingly sharp, as you can see in these test shots. A really good camera for both beginners and pros. The auto modes work really well for beginners, and it also gives pros full manual control over exposure, white balance, and focal points. The built-in panorama mode also works marvelously, producing some stunning wide-angle scenery shots. When it comes to video, you're limited to shooting in AVC HD, as the camera's MP4 video sizes are practically unusable. You can shoot in either 60i or 24p. We recommend sticking to 24 fps, Sony has rather smartly dropped the 720p video option as almost no one uses it these days. To make up for the sparse video format options, Sony has crammed in several features that are commonly found on much more expensive cameras. Some of those notable features are focus peaking, zebras, and manual white balance adjustment. All these features translate into extremely high quality video, especially considering the camera's price point. The video is sharp, well exposed, the colors are very well reproduced, and continuous autofocus also works surprisingly well. well the camera is also very good at shooting selfies. More importantly, you can shoot yourself in front of the camera if you don't have anybody to hold the camera or if you don't have a tripod. Now I'm doing this freehand but you can also place it on a tripod. And as you can see, the quality is really good. And more importantly, the audio is amazing. The audio is really amazing. Though you can't plug in an external microphone, the microphone on the camera is actually pretty impressive.
While the camera is equipped with NFC and Wi-Fi, the initial setup process is so clunky, complicated, ridiculous, and annoying that most people will probably never use these Wi-Fi enabled features. However, if you absolutely need Wi-Fi connectivity, it does exist. So our overall thoughts about the Sony Alpha A5000. If you're looking for an entry-level mirrorless camera, you just can't get any better than the A5000. It packs a huge sensor in an extremely compact body Body, takes impressive stills and video, and is packed with features that will appeal to both casual users and seasoned pros. Definitely one of the best entry-level mirrorless cameras on the market. Hope this review was useful. If it was, please hit that like button and subscribe for more reviews. Thanks for watching.